We'd like to call this meeting to order. This is the uh, County Recording Commission meeting dated today, November 1st. Woo! It's, uh, we're coming down to the end of the year. Our Pledge of Allegiance, <clears throat> pardon me, today will be given by Christy Bingham. Oh. <laughs> All right, Stacy will be given by you. And uh, I will do uh, the invocation for Commissioner Harvey, and then uh, I'll give the thought of the day. So, uh, there. Father, as we come before this day, we do so with gratitude in our heart for our blessings, for the opportunity we have of serving in government and representing the people of this wonderful county. We pray that I would keep our uh, minds clear and uh, make us uh, able and uh, up to the job. We pray for those in the county. Lord, we're grateful for this time of year, the harvest, and we're grateful for uh, all the blessings uh, we've received. We pray that that be with us and direct us this day, and we do it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So my thought of the day has to do with uh, the fall of the year. You know, it's uh, my favorite time of the year. I used to be a big hunter. I'm not anymore. But the fall of the year represents uh, all your summer activities, right? The harvest. And uh, uh, when you uh, participate in the harvest, it gives you a great deal of uh, pleasure for all your efforts you've put forward. I was raised on a little farm as a boy. We were row croppers, and so uh, we harvest heavily in the fall. And uh, this year, I always put away potatoes for my kids. I figure if uh, worse comes worse, they can eat potatoes. <laughs> you can live on a potato. And so uh, I bought potatoes this year. Me and my brother went, and we bought... Uh, 1,200 pounds. Let's see, is that right? Yeah, 1,200 pounds of potatoes. And we paid uh, $50 a pound. That's as expensive as I've ever seen potatoes. It's double what it was last year. Uh, $50 a pound is expensive for potatoes. But that's what's happening. I see where diesel, they said we had 25 days of diesel fuel in the pipeline right now. Other than that, uh, wow. you know. So uh, anyway, uh, yeah, these are tough times. You need to be very aware of what's going on around you. Last night, uh, kind of the end of the harvest is Halloween, right? And Halloween's my favorite time of year. I love Halloween when all the kids knock on my door and uh, uh, get a chance to come and speak and uh, say trick or treat. And we give them a little candy bar and. Anyway, I like to, uh, I kind of interview the kids when they're there. Who's, who's your mom and dad? Where are you from? <laughs> and uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, we really enjoy the Halloween at our place. Uh, anyway, it's a good time of year, so enjoy it. That's my thought of the day. Great thought. And it's Thank good, you. good to hear that, you know, you Plain City guys were all the row croppers out there. Us valley, us valley boys, you know, we didn't have a lot of row crops, so. It's true. We, we cut alfalfa and then started getting ready for the snow. That's right. You guys up there, uh, you can't get, I mean, you might get some raspberries to grow, but that's about it. Raspberries was about it, yeah. Yeah, that's right. All right. Uh, we will go to item E on our agenda day, which is public comments. Uh, Shelly, you had something for us? Sorry, commissioners. I meant to put this on the agenda, so I appreciate you giving me this opportunity. I just want to announce that it is our annual food drive time. So we'd encourage everybody in Weber County to bring us some food. We're planning on taking it to the Joyce Hanson Hall Food Bank. We need all donations by November 17th at 10 a.m. And we will be having a contest. <coughs> uh, so the department that brings us the most donations will receive a pizza party. So let's get it going. Very good, thank you. Thank you. 
So guys like me and Gage are lazy at this. We can just give you cash, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Great. We'll that's do that. what we do. Easy. Uh, that's right. Easy. All right. Our consent items today. Start uh, on uh, consent items F. Uh, first one is request. Oh. Did we do public? Uh, yeah. I didn't go to the rest of the uh, public. I'm sorry about that. Is there anybody else here who would like to comment today? We'd love to hear from you. Consent items related or uh, agenda items. All right, don't see any, so we'll move on. <coughs> Request for approval of warrants that are listed today for $771,719. Request for approval of purchase orders in the amount of $492,871. I don't know, oh, uh, do you wanna go over those, uh, Ricky? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this week we issued six, uh, 26 purchase orders for $493,000. Uh, there were two line items for 28,000 or 28% or $140,000. One was for the jail, which will purchase a new dishwasher uh, as well as evidence lockers and inmate clothing and supplies. <laughs> the other is for IT to purchase uh, network switches. We had 17% uh, of this amount of $85,000 <laughs> is for property management to replace the roof at the USU extension building to get a gate opener for the property management warehouse and then for janitorial supplies. 11% or $56,000 is for the transfer station, which is primarily parts for equipment, as well as some uh, um, requests for temporary employees. And then 6% or $29,000 is for the sheriff's office to purchase tasers. As far as warrants, we issued 143 checks this week for $772,000. Half of that amount, $386,000, was uh, an escrow release for the basin, as well as the Im sewer impact fees for Central Weber Sewer. 8% or $63,000 is for the jail to purchase food, utilities, and building maintenance. And then 5% or $42,000 is for the sheriff to purchase fuel and uh, phone services. Very good, Ricky. We appreciate that. All right, uh, item four is a request for approval of minutes of uh, for the meeting held on October 25th. Item five is request for approval of new business licenses. Item six <coughs> is request for uh, the Weber Morgan Health Department for approval of, to surplus a uh, 2010 Ford Ranger Super Duty XL. Item seven is request for approval of right of way contracts by between Weber County and the following individuals, Jeffrey Messerly and Cynthia Messerly, Shelly and Clayton Christensen, uh, Stephen McKinson, McKinson, McKisson, McKisson, and Tracy McKisson, uh, Rodman Flint and Bobby Flint, and Javier Lopez and Maria Lopez. I think this is in relationship to 2200 North, isn't it? 2550. 2550. Oh, this is out west. Okay. 2550 South, I believe. Yeah, that's good. All right, those are all our uh, consent items. Uh, do you have any uh, questions, Commissioner Farr? I don't. I'd be happy to make a motion. I'm ready for that. Chair. So I'd move to approve consent items uh, as on our agenda F1 through 7. Very good. I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Those are approved. <clears throat> Very good. We'll go to the uh, action items. Uh, first item on our agenda, G1 is in golf. <laughs> Commissioner <laughs> Harvey would say, is consideration uh, and action on a request for approval of a second amendment of the Second Amendment to the Powder Mountain Development Agreement, CDA 2022-01. Mr. Steve Burton. Yes. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. Um, the the developer of uh, the Powder Mountain Resort, known as uh, <coughs> Summit Mountain Holding Group, it has submitted a a. a a request to amend the development agreement the second amendment it would be um, and the the intent the intention of the development agreement um, is to allow the developer to make small changes to the master plan without having to go through an entire legislative process every time one of those small changes is proposed and what I mean by that is um, the master plan at Powder Mountain it has several maps that include um, what we call uh, concept development plans 
So each area of Powder Mountain is planned to be developed a certain way, and there's maps associated with the general plan, sorry, not the general plan, the master plan, that show how that build out will happen. Uh, what what um, SMHG has seen over the years is that the market um, the uh, the market demand has changed a little bit, uh, and and they're asking for some flexibility to change a few a few things around in their concept maps as the as the market demands. Um, now, what the proposal is is it would it would allow the land use authority, who would be um, the planning director or the planning commission, to make to to approve those small changes. Um, an example might be if 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 the concept plan today shows a mixed use development in one portion of a concept area and they're proposing um, they're proposing a uh, single family development maybe really may, maybe a, a small single family development nearby well that might be a small enough change that the planning director or planning commission could make without needing to go through an entire legislative process to amend the development agreement every time one of those changes is proposed so that's what's before you today they're asking um, to, to, to have that flexibility. Uh, we saw the same thing with Snow Basin last year. They asked for the same thing um, and, and got approved. Um, I'll let you know the, the Planning Commission did forward a positive recommendation on this request. However, the Planning Commission wanted to be the actual approval body of those small changes. They didn't want it to be the Planning Director. Um, so I wanted to let you know that. They said, yeah, we're okay with the change, but the Planning Commission wants to make that change. Um, the developer is still asking that that it be listed as the land use authority to make those changes. So you're not presenting to us a specific change today. You're presenting to us the concept that allows them to amend this. It's right. I'm 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 presenting. And language. I kind of thought that already existed, Steve. It doesn't exist in the Powder Mountain Agreement yet. That flexibility. No, uh -huh. that's all they're proposing today. Okay. Did for Snow Basin. Yeah. Questions. So really, Steve, the question comes down to whether it's land use authority staff or whether the planning commission right. approves this. That's right. Yeah, I'm, I'm in support. Uh, this is something very similar to what we approved for Snow Basin. For Snow Basin, did we make it uh, uh, planning commission approval or land use authority? Land use authority. Okay. And again, what we're talking about here is no increased density uh, we're just talking about moving uh, a mixed use maybe uh, you know a quarter mile or half a mile in a different direction based upon market demand and and I support this Mr. Chair simply be, you know these 10 year 20 year plans put together the market changes people change um, we need to have the flexibility again uh, we're not talking major uh, any type of density increases etc we're just talking about taking an approved use and taking it from one area and putting it into another um, with no with no significant impact. So uh, I'm in favor of this. I, <coughs> I probably support uh, under the keeping it consistent. I would prefer that we keep it consistent with the Snow Basin approval, which would be land use authority personally. But uh, but I'm open uh, if if uh, the feelings otherwise. I don't have any other feelings otherwise. Okay. I'm with you there. You okay with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I would, I'd be, be prepared to make a motion. Yeah, I'm ready to accept that. So, Mr. Chair, I'd make a motion that uh, we approve the second amendment to the Powder Mountain Development Agreement, CDA 2022-01, with the stipulation that it be consistent with Snow Basin, so there's really no... I just don't see any reason to be different from the Snow Basin Plan that Land Use Authority have the uh, approval right uh, for any of those changes. Okay, I'd second that. Uh, Steve, you want to comment on that? That's that's how we've written it, uh, as you've explained. Um, okay. Anticipating Great. that as we've met in, in work session with you before. So it's yeah. ready. Yeah, that's... It says Land Use, ready for you to sign. So. Yeah, and I, uh, and I just like to be consistent uh, across the board. And since Snow Basin and Powder Mountain, Powder Mountain are similar areas, similar resorts, uh, I think it just avoids any confusion um, with both of those entities. So, all right, that's my motion, Mr. Chair. Good, and it's been seconded. So, uh, I will uh, call it. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Aye.
It passes. Very good. Uh, item two is request for approval of an agreement by and between Weber County and the Offices of Justice Program, Office of Justice Programs, for grant funding uh, award for $1.3 million from the uh, Office Progr of Justice Program for the uh, F-22 Comprehensive Opioid Stimulant and Substance Abuse Site-Based Program <laughs> to support a pilot re-entry program in Weber County. Laura Andelin. Hi, Laura. I bet you can't say that five times. Boy, I'll mission. say. Wow. <laughs> That's a mouthful. <laughs> um, good morning, Commissioners. Can I um, first ask, would it be okay if I present on item G2 and 3 at the same time as they're sure. directly related? So let me call item G3 uh, then. Uh, that's a request for approval for a multi-agency memorandum of understanding find between Weber County Sheriff's Office and the Weber County Correctional Facility, Weber County Housing Authority, Weber Human Services, Lantern House, Ogden Police Department, Utah Support Advocate for Recovery Awareness uh, to commemorate to collaborate in the execution of a pilot program to incre increase the capacity and quality of re-entry services in Weber County. There you go, so now you can. Thank you so much. Um, so in May of this year, in collaboration with the Weber County Community Reentry Coalition, the Weber County Sheriff's Office applied for, um, we'll just call it COSAP, you read out the long, <laughs> version, but COSAP grant funding through the Department of Justice, Bureau of Justice Assistance for a total of $1.3 million over three years. On September 29th, we received notice that we were awarded the full amount to pursue an innovative and collaborative pilot project. As part of this project, Weber County will enhance reentry support services for justice-involved individuals in our community with special attention to those who have a substance use disorder and have experienced or are at risk for experiencing homelessness. The Weber County Community Reentry Coalition will be the oversight body for this project. And this project will integrate peer support services. So the Weber County what? Community Reentry Coalition. Okay, so does that, <clears throat> that's a brand new group. It, it's about a year and a half old, but yeah, still relatively, okay. it's a toddler now. <laughs> okay. Great. Um, this project will integrate peer support services within the local criminal justice system and housing services, increase reentry support services and case management capacity to bridge gaps along the sequential intercept model, provide funds for housing assistance, and mitigate costs associated with obtaining housing assistance and or employment. Um, so specifically, the grant funds will support two full-time forensic peer support specialists um, those positions will provide critical addiction recovery support services that are tailored to meet the specific needs of individuals returning from incarceration with substance use disorders and or experiencing homelessness, whether that's for the first time or chronically. Um, two additional full-time case manager or community reentry coordinator positions who will provide assessment, reentry planning, and resource connection with the ability to work in both the jail and shelter, as well as other locations in the community as necessary, to serve as a bridge between these two agencies that see many people cycle between them. Three is a full-time project and community engagement coordinator position who will ensure collaboration between partner organizations and the community, establish policies and procedures to support best practices for the needs of the identified population, coordinate data collection and performance reporting, and manage other grant requirements. And finally, um, the remainder of the funds will be used for supplemental housing assistance, along with vouchers for initial costs such as identification documents, application fees, or first month's rent or deposit for those exiting incarceration with no income or means to pay. Um, I do just wanna take a moment to emphasize the amount of collaboration that was required um, or that has been required for this project to um, be brought to life. The development of this project, the application process, and the successful implementation of this pilot are built upon existing partnerships. Um, referring to the Memorandum of Understanding, those primary partnerships are between Weber County Sheriff's Office, Weber Human Services, Utah Support Advocates for Recovery Awareness, Ogden Police Department, Lantern House Homeless Shelter, 
Weber Housing Authority. Um, and while these six agencies are the ones listed on the MOU being presented for your review today, <coughs> Multiple other agencies were also involved in helping to bring this project to life through letters of support, participation on the grant committee, et cetera, including Weber Morgan Health Department, Adult Probation and Parole, Ogden NAACP, Weber State University, and yourselves, the Weber County Commission, just to name a few. I'm grateful for the level of support, innovation, and collaboration among so many of our community partners. And with that, I turn it to you for any questions. Questions, Commissioner Floor? Yeah, questions, I guess, or comments, if I might, Mr. Chair. Yeah. So I, I really like the collaboration number of entities that you mentioned. I'm assuming that uh, a, a good share of the resources of this will be directed, when you talk about reentry, will be uh, directed toward uh, the jail. Um, and I guess also you'll be looking, working with, as you talk about housing, working with the Lantern House and uh, Weber Housing, as you mentioned, vouchers. So it sounds like it's a pretty extensive uh, program that you've put together here. Has, has this been used anywhere else in the state? Are we the first to start this like we are in a lot of number of Weber County uh, programs? To my knowledge, this is the first of its kind in the, in the state. Um, and I'm not aware of anything specifically um, that's that's exactly like this model um, anywhere so that's good well I would uh, I would support this mr. chair and one comment I'd make is that this seems to fall right in line with uh, some of the direction we're headed with the CJCC the new program that the states required so I would uh, just make sure that you coordinate with Melissa and maybe you have already so that we can uh, be all be on the same page as these reentry programs go into effect. I think this could maybe be the direction the CJCC really takes a look at in the future. So thank you. Well, and Center of Excellence. Melissa is really yeah. involved in both of them. So she overlaps in. Yeah, both those right. Areas. Yeah. So make sure she's involved. Yeah. We're great. All right. I don't have any problems with this either. So No, I, uh, it sounds, uh, and this was a state grant, if I'm not mistaken. It's a federal grant. Oh, federal grant. Okay. <clears throat> Good. And, and how long is the, is it uh, a renewable, uh, ongoing, or one-time? What's the? Um, so it's a, it's a three-year period. It's a one-time funding um, that we can submit for renewal at the end of that period if needed. Okay, so the program is based on a three, the one point three million being spread over three years. Correct. Is that correct? Yes. All right, Mr. Chair. Good. I'm excited to see what uh, takes place. Me too. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. How about a motion, Gage? I'd be happy to make a motion, Mr. Chair. Uh, so I would uh, move agenda action item G two request for approval and agreement by and between Weber County and the Office of Justice Programs for grant funding award of 1.3 million from the Office of Justice Programs, OJ, OJP, uh, Comprehensive Opioid Stimulant and Substance Abuse Site-Based Program to support the pilot reentry program, or reentry project in Weber County as presented in today. I'll second that. You did a better job than yeah. me reading that. <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, it's approved. All right, G3. I'd make a motion on action item G3, request for approval of uh, multi-agency memorandum of understanding by and between Weber County Sheriff's Office and Weber County Correctional Facility, Weber Housing Authority, Weber Human Services, Lantern House, Ogden Police Department, Utah Support Advocates for Recovery Awareness to collaborate in the execution of a pilot program to increase the capacity and quality reentry services in Weber County, and I'd move approval of that uh, agreement. I will second that. All in favor say aye. 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 It's approved. Thanks, Thank Laura. Thank you very much. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. All right. Uh, we now have a presentation of the 2023 tentative budget. Scott Park. Good morning, Commissioners. You bet. Good morning. So as you're aware, we've been re reviewing the budget for the 2023 budget cycle. Um, this process started back in August when the department started compiling their requests. They sent it to the clerk auditor's office in the uh, first part of September, which we then 
compiled it together, presented it to you guys uh, in the first end of September, first part of October. We've had many meetings on this. We've had many discussions on that. And so we've taken all that work. We've boiled it down into a tentative budget document, which is now available on the county's website. Um, this uh, 2023 tentative budget includes a couple of items I wanted to highlight. Um, one, it has a 3% cost of living increase for employees, plus it includes a one-time pay for performance bonus based off of uh, performance. We have a 14% increase in our health insurance cost and the county's going to pick up its share and ask the employees to pick up their share. So when the county pays 80%, they'll pay 80% of the increase. The employee who pays 20% would pay 20% of the increase or if they're on a 90-10 plan, the same thing. The uh, budget includes a couple of new um, full-time uh, positions to help out with various needs of the county as we continue to grow, uh, specifically the attorney's office and in our public defender's office to help manage caseloads. There's a few others in there as well as outlined in the budget. And then it includes money for several capital projects. So this document uh, being available on the website now will uh, sit out there um, for the public to review. Uh, we will get together. There's no action to be taken on this um, item today. We will hold a public hearing on November 22nd to actually gather feedback from the public on this budget. Um, and at that, at that time, we'll address any feedback they have any concerns and we anticipate passing a final budget in uh, the first part of December. Uh, I did want to point out that uh, this budget uh, has no proposed tax increase for the coming year. So we're fine to continue to hold those property tax rates as they are now. We don't need to increase them for this coming year. So with that, I just present to you the tentative budget and I'm um, happy to answer any questions you may have on it. Very good. Commissioner Four. any questions? Uh, yeah, so Scott, what we had a 3% COLA. Correct. Across the board, and we had a merit or a pay for performance of what was the percent on that? So we, we've allocated a certain amount of money. Um, we haven't, <laughs> we want to distribute that amongst the departments based off of the ratings. So okay. we don't want to set an expectation that everybody's going to get this amount. We want it to be based off of their performance. So I don't want to put out a number and say, well, everybody's going to get a 1% or a 2% increase because it's really based off of the, the performance evaluations. Great. Does that make sense? That makes sense. And yeah. I just wanted to be clear on that. So there is no set amount percent wise or, uh, and again, that's the basis of our pay for performance, which I fully support. Mm -hmm. uh, and for those hardworking employees of our county, they could receive X percent. Somebody else could receive less than that. But yeah. I think it's a uh, show of support that we have for the great workers, great employees here at Weber County, Mr. Chair. I agree with that. Yeah, I agree with that. So, uh, uh, as far as our uh, budget, we've spent months on that now. Mm -hmm. uh, we've went top to bottom through this thing, and I, it's been exhaustive, Scott. I, I have to admit, uh, it was uh, big last year, but it seems wore, like it was a little bigger this year. Wore us down, yeah. yeah. Really wore us down. I think that's because we have lots of other things that we're considering with it as we go along. But all in all, I'm very pleased. Or what is your personal position on this? I ask you that because you live and die in this thing. So, commissioners, in previous years, sometimes we've had a really easy budget cycle, like in 2016, because we started the year off with no money. We had no ability to fund cost of living increases. We had no ability to do capital projects. So I guess you would argue that's an easy budget to do because the answer to everything was no. Right. Um, the commission now, um, over the last few years, we've put every fund in a position where it's self-sustaining and is self-sustaining for at least the next five years. We look out a five-year time frame and make sure that all the budgets are sustainable in that time frame and they're all sustainable in that time frame. So uh, we have had some decent uh, sales tax growth. Uh, we've also had increased costs with inflation, so we're dealing with that as well. But uh, I think the county positions in every fund is in a comfortable spot at this moment, and that's why we don't have to look at raising taxes uh, this coming year. So I think we're in a good spot. Thank you. I, I think that's an important uh, comment to make on the public record, Mr. Chair, is that uh, there is no anticipated tax increase for this next year based upon our fund balances. We've been able to uh, sustain and balance and make sure that they were healthy. And I think that uh, comes about from good physical, physical responsibility. Uh, a lot of that credit can go to our clerk auditor, Mr. Ricky Hatch and of course Scott, Scott Park and his group that as we evaluate these budgets and a lot goes to our teams 
our workers here, uh, if you look at the efficiencies, this hasn't all come about just because of cutting back. This has come about from efficiencies and uh, expecting more from our workers here at Weber County, which they produced over the last four years, Mr. Chair. So I think uh, under your leadership this past year, we've been uh, done a great job of, of balancing those and making sure the future for Weber County, at least over the next four or five years, is, is very secure. Yeah, actually, I agree. We've all got together and <clears throat> we've had a commission that's got along well with each other. and We've worked jointly very hard uh, to keep all our uh, individual portfolios financed and doing well. And so uh, I'm very happy with that. Uh, very good. Well, uh, Scott, uh, we'll uh, have that presented again to us uh, in a public hearing coming up. Yep. Very good. Thank you, sir. No so problem. just to make sure that now's the time for the public. They're available on the website. Mm -hmm. So it's now the time for those people that um, have concerns. They can look at uh, what the future holds for the expenditures in, in Weber County. Now's the time to get into the, to the website and look and ask any questions between now and what, uh, what's our next date? The, the 22nd is when we we'll actually hold the public hearing. So okay. if they have questions. Of November. Of November, yes. 22nd November. So yeah, members of the public. Got three weeks. Now's your opportunity to get in and come prepared on that meeting with any questions or comments. Yep. Thanks, Scott. I appreciate that, Commissioner Floor. Uh, so many times uh, I wish Tim Vandernack was here because uh, this is exactly what uh, the paper should be uh, publishing now is uh, now. The next three weeks is the time to get into our budgets and make sure that they're pleased or not pleased. Uh, they can tell us that with what we've done. Thanks, Scott. We appreciate you a lot. Uh, from our point of view, we want you to know we've uh, enjoyed working with you on this. Thank you. Appreciate it. You bet. Thanks, Scott. I'll actually just stand up here because I'm on the next next item. Oh, yeah, he's so that's all right. right. So the next item we'd like to go into a, a public hearing. Mr. Chair, I'd move uh, that we adjourn our public meeting and reconvene as a public hearing. And I'd uh, second that. All in favor, say aye. Okay, we're now in a public hearing. Purpose of this public hearing is to discuss the amendments to the operating capital budget for Weber County for 19, uh, for the 2022 calendar year. So, uh, just so the public understands, when we get to the end of our budgets, we, uh, law requires us to balance them. So, uh, we're here today to any overages or shortages we've had, we will amend the budget to put a little extra money in there or take a little out, depending on what you say today, to make sure our budget balances. So, Scott, to you. Yep. So, and you're correct, Commissioner. So now we're not talking about the 2023 budget, but we're jumping back to this year, the current 2022 budget. And, and we do this every quarter. We want to make sure that uh, we're, we're making these minor adjustments all along as opposed to coming to the end of the year and trying to make big adjustments. So you have before you the uh, requested adjustments for this third quarter. Um, and really the big thing that's come in is we've had about a 600 or well, nearly 700, $800,000 of new grants come in. So these are funding from either through the state or the federal government, and we're just requesting permission to spend the money that we're getting. So it's not additional taxpayer dollars going out the door, but it's new money coming in and we're requesting permission to spend that. So there was a, an IDC grant that helps fund our public defenders. We had some money from the state of Utah to help fund the Weber Morgan Health Department, and we had a ramp grant. We also had uh, some opportunity to do some improvements. Uh, we needed to do some HVAC improvements at the jail and at our animal shelter. So you'll see requests for $44,000 to help cover those maintenance. We have money set aside in our fund balance to do this, so we don't need to, uh, you know, we have the reserves available for this. That's why we save some money so we can cover things like this when they pop up. We also had the opportunity to purchase a paving machine at the roads department. Now we had, we were originally planning to finance that, but we had enough cash on hand. There was no reason for us to pay interest uh, to finance a piece of equipment, so we just paid for it outright. Um, so that was $375,000. And then we had some various miscellaneous other uh, adjustments here and there with some concession revenues coming up a little higher than expected. So we needed to cover the increased cost of sales that went with it and, and various small adjustments like that. So all in all, there's not, uh, not a lot of changes this year, but I will present uh, those adjustments to you. Uh, and happy to answer any questions you may have. Questions? No, it's been through them and it looks good. Same here. Okay. I've been through the same meetings that the Commissioner Frohr was in when we, he went through them. So I don't really have any questions. You know, it just it makes me happy <clears throat> when uh, I came on 
And uh, you look at Roads Department, and you look at the uh, transfer station, and you look at all these different agencies, and uh, we were upside down in many of them, and we've been able to right the ship, and everything is actually running really good right now. So uh, very happy with this. Now, one thing I might mention is, you know, we have some cash availability right now. One of the uh, results of having that cash was paying off some debt or refinancing debt uh, at a great opportunity, Mr. Chair, when yeah. rates were low. I mean, I can't imagine we couldn't do that today. So uh, in the effort of doing that and saving the taxpayers of this county uh, about $2.5 in interest cost per year, that uh, that helps a lot in this budget to be able to do things like that, stay out of the finance world. You know, my grandpa used to tell me a lot of times, it's always better to pay cash when you have it, uh, and uh, save that uh, save that interest. Yeah, I think we're seeing the results of some of that today in our county budget. I agree. Thank you, Commissioner. All right, Scott, if that ends your presentation, it does. Thank you. Very good. We'll go to public comment then. We'd love the public. Uh, we see a few here today. If anybody would like to uh, stand up and comment on our uh, mid-year adjustment to our uh, uh, budget, we'd love to hear from you. Now would be the time. Please. <laughs> All right. don't see anybody going to make that comment. So with that, uh, Commissioner Four. All right, Mr. Chair. So with no public comment, I would... Uh, Make a motion to adjourn our public hearing and reconvene as a public meeting. So moved, and I will second that. All in favor say aye. 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 We're back in a regular public meeting. Very good. So uh, the action item today now would be to approve the amendments uh, and is the resolution that's listed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, when you're ready, I would move to approve Resolution 46-2022, which is the amendments to the operating and capital budgets uh, as presented today by Mr. Scott Park on our 2022 calendar year budget. Very good, and I'll second that. Uh, all in favor say aye. Oops, this is a roll call, sorry. Greg, go ahead. Roll call vote for resolution 46-2022, Commissioner Four. Aye. Chair Jenkins. Aye. Very good, that's approved. Well, that uh, ends our uh, meeting items today. Uh, Commissioner Four, uh, comments? I just uh, just want it's uh, as you mentioned uh, earlier in your comments. It's nice to see this weather change and the time of year. Yeah. Um, we're anticipating possibly a little snow here well, this week, is what I hear. And boy, we can sure need it. It's started out to be a good year. Uh, if we could have a great snow year, wow, wouldn't that uh, help our reservoirs and be a great start to 2023? Yeah, I agree. You're absolutely right. That's there. my comments. Thank you. Uh, and I would echo that. We need a good s snow year this year. Uh, we've had, uh, oh, eight or 10, 12 years of really tough times uh, water wise. And uh, we could use, uh, uh, we really need two or three years, but uh, it's got to start with one. Start with one. That's right. So I agree with that. Well, very good. Uh, I don't have anything else to say either, so how about a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Recording stopped.